Good morning. I thought today I would take you through everything that I eat in a day as a pregnant dermatologist. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find skincare products that work for you. And sometimes I like to take you through my day and show you what else I'm up to. If you like what you see, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So first things first, I'm going to go make myself some coffee before I was pregnant. I was like a one cup in the morning kind of girl and I still am that. I know there are a lot of people who just cannot even stomach coffee when they're pregnant. Luckily that's not me. Also people were like, you're gonna drink coffee while you're pregnant? Yes, I looked at a lot of the data. I also read this amazing book called Expecting Better by Emily Oster, who is an economist. And she really looks at all of the data surrounding pregnancy lore and what you should and should not be doing. And if that's really guided by any scientific value. So if you are trying to conceive or you're pregnant and you kind of wanna go by what the data says, what the science says, I totally, totally recommend her book. So if you've seen my other what I eat in a day videos or like my morning routine video, my coffee setup has really not changed at all. I'm having my counterculture coffee today. Big trouble, one of my absolute favorites. Got my like bean grinder here. And then I'm just gonna do a little pour over espresso machine is for when the husband wants to make cappuccinos, which I will always take him up on. And then I just use my little kettle here and we'll do a little pour over. So one thing I've noticed in pregnancy is I used to be the type of person that would eat like a few really big meals throughout the day, or sometimes I'd even skip breakfast and then just eat like a big lunch and a big dinner. I cannot do that anymore. I don't have the capacity in here to handle that much food at once. And if I try to do that, I will get the worst heartburn. So one of the big things I've had to do is like space my meals out more over the course of the day, which when I'm home for the day, like I am today, it's fine, but it's a lot trickier at work, like finding time to get little snacks in. So I know I wanna do a workout this morning. I don't wanna eat like a big breakfast before that. So I'm gonna have my coffee and I'm just gonna have a little, <laughs> looks like a wart, uh, have a clementine uh, for breakfast or a tangerine so that I can kind of have some fuel but not feel overly full and then I'll eat my like legitimate breakfast afterward. I've been craving so much citrus in pregnancy. I don't know what it is, but like I used to really like like rich creamy things like chocolate and like coffee flavors and caramels. And now I want like fruit flavors of everything. And I've been eating probably more fruit than I ever had during this like past nine months or so. I'm just gonna eat this while I make my coffee. <laughs> I usually put soy milk in my coffee. I think we're out of soy milk, so. I use almond milk today. If you've seen my other What I Eat in a Day videos, I'm mostly plant-based in what I eat, but I'm very not strict about that at all. Like I still have cheese and ice cream from time to time. If there's a fancy occasion, I'll have some type of meat. The plant-based thing is more of like a health goal, but it's not something that I hold myself to really, really strictly. I know in my last video, people are like, cheese is not plant-based, what are you doing? Don't judge me. I'm just trying to eat both for my health, but also to enjoy my life and have pleasure in what I do. I think there's so much culture and joy that comes with food and I don't wanna deprive myself of that. So if I'm not going to eat exactly strictly to one type of diet, that is okay. If you wanna do something different, that's okay too. Coffee is all done. I made some also for my husband. I'm not gonna drink all of this. I already put my almond milk in my mug so that it'll kind of get heated up as I add my coffee. Very excited to drink this. I'm gonna have this, finish off my citrus workout, and then I will meet you back here for when I do my official full breakfast. All right, I have worked out, did my little Peloton spin class. I showered, got dressed, well, back in what I was wearing before, letting my hair dry, so part of my outfit. For breakfast, I often will have oatmeal, but today I'm gonna have, I think, like chia pudding. It's something that I always keep in my fridge, and I usually have it as a snack, but I'm feeling kind of like hot from my workout, so I want something that's a little cooler, so. I make it ahead of time in like a big batch. Doesn't that look so appealing? <laughs> um, but I usually will put it in a bowl with some nuts and fruit, depending on what I'm in the mood for that day. Try to be kind of seasonal with it, but it is such a good snack or breakfast. And it's got protein, fiber, omega-3s, which is really good for developing baby brain and eyes. So I'll put that together and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. All right, this is me trying to get in the camera frame, but also have this set up in my kitchen. So 
I start with like a base of the chia pudding. This particular recipe is one that I can link in the description box below. It's delicious. This one has almond milk, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of salt, and then maple syrup. So it's sweet, but not too sweet. And then you can sweeten it up more if you want to add some honey or more syrup. Today, I'm adding some toasted walnuts. I usually just keep like a Tupperware of those around. And then I'm going to do some tart cherries. I like to do fresh fruit, but it's not really berry season, so eh. And I like the chew of like frozen, I mean, dried fruit. Oh my God, I can't talk. That's what it looks like. I wish I could make it look all pretty and aesthetic, but that's legitimately how I eat it. I will say the texture of chia pudding is not going to be for everyone. So I can understand when people are like, mm, chia pudding's not for me, but I love it. Especially when you add like the crunchy nuts and the chewy fruit. It's so good. I have tried really hard to eat as balanced of a diet as possible in pregnancy. I don't really think you're eating for two, like you're not eating twice of the number of calories, but you are trying to fuel another being. And so I've been a little more mindful of what I've been eating. That's very hard to balance with the cravings and things like that. Luckily, I never had much morning nausea. So I've always been able to like eat breakfast throughout the pregnancy, which I think has been really, really helpful. But this is one of my absolute go-tos and it's so good. Kind of like what I was saying before, I do think this makes an awesome snack. I usually just keep a baggie of toppings in my drawer at work and then chia pudding is great because it packs up. You can put it in like a mason jar or something like that and then have it for an afternoon snack. I really like it before a workout too in the evening or something like that where I come home from work and I don't want to eat like a big dinner. I'm hungry after the day and I need something to fuel a workout. It works perfectly for that as well. And then really throughout my pregnancy, I've just been drinking water. I have found using like a squeezy water bottle like this is the best way for me to just drink as much water as humanly possible because I'm very prone to getting dehydrated. And it also helps me kind of measure out how much I'm drinking. So even though I'm not like, oh, I have to drink five of these a day or three of these a day, at least I can kind of get a sense of if I've gotten 75% through my day and I haven't finished a single water bottle. Like I know I kind of need to step up my game. So I am all done with breakfast. Delicious. I am going to go kind of get ready for my day and go out and run some errands with my husband. Maybe we'll go on like a little walk or something like that. If we get lunch while we're out, I will show you what we get. Otherwise I'll come back here and eat lunch a little bit later, but mm, that was so good. All right, we are back from errands and outings and all of that. My husband actually made a salad, which I'm not going to eat for lunch throughout this pregnancy. I haven't had a ton of cravings, but I have had some serious like food aversions where I'm like, ugh, get that away from me. And leafy greens not cooked are like one of them, which is so sad. <laughs> it's very not ideal if you're trying to be healthy, but I kind of have to listen to my body and I'm not gonna force feed myself anything that I really don't want to eat. So for my lunch, I'm going to have kind of like leftovers from last night. We sort of made what I would call like a Buddha bowl. I like having these like individual components. Like this is brown rice, got like a cabbage slaw here. And it lets me sort of like build my own thing based on like what I'm in the mood for. When it comes to eating healthy, I sort of think if you, <laughs> fail to plan, you plan to fail. So having things that are sort of pre-cooked and stored in Tupperware for me is a great way that I can always have something on the go. I'm not perfect. Like sometimes that doesn't happen and I got to reach for something frozen in the freezer or whatever. But in general, I like having things like prepped lentils, steamed broccoli, sliced up like bell peppers, things like that. So if I want to build something on the go or I want a little snack, it's like already there and done. And so maybe like once a week, I will feel empowered to put some of that stuff together. And while I'm in the mood, I will do it. And then it's just there for me when I need it. Okay, so I'm just gonna like put some of this stuff together. Now, see, now I got the bump going on. I feel like over the course of the day, the bump just gets bigger and bigger. And by the end, like it's out of control. Brown rice. Put that in. I usually don't season most of these things so that say I wanted to take this in more of like a Mexican food direction, it wouldn't already be dressed up with soy sauce. So I'm gonna put a little soy sauce on there. Give it a little Asian vibe. This cabbage slaw that we make is sort of pre-seasoned. So this has a little bit of canola oil, a little bit of sesame oil, rice wine vinegar, salt, and a little bit of sugar. And I just think it is super delicious and it adds like a nice tang to anything that you're eating. 
steamed broccoli. So broccoli is one of those things that I can still eat in pregnancy and not be like completely grossed out by. Now, if you had tried to give this to me in my first trimester, I would have punched you in the face. And then edamame. So that's kind of where the protein is coming from. If I was hungrier, I could put like an egg on top of this. I think that would be really delicious and a way to add more protein or tofu. In my last What I Eat in a Day video, people really came after me for like not eating enough protein, but like plants have plenty of protein. It's fine. And then just to make this a little more exciting, one of my favorite condiments is this like spicy chili garlic sauce. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that on it. And then some kimchi, love like a good fermented kimchi. So. We'll put that all together and I'll show you what it looks like. So there is my little bowl. It took me under a minute to put together. And I think this will be so delicious. Throughout my life and in pregnancy in particular, my goal is really just to eat like a variety of things. I think the more diversity that you have in your meals, the better. Also, I try to eat a lot of vegetables when I can. Oh. I'm working on it. I've always loved spicy food, but particularly in pregnancy, I like spicy food because it makes the baby kick. And that to me is just the coolest thing. So I don't know if that's cruel to do that to him, but um, it's like a little bit provocative. This is so good. This is really filling. There's a lot of fiber, protein. I'll stop talking with my mouth full, but I'm very happy. I know I've mentioned fiber a lot already today, but one of the main pregnancy symptoms is constipation. And so the more fiber you can get into your diet, that's a really nice way to combat that. That and of course, like drinking a lot of water and being up on your fluids. So I think I've made an even more concerted effort to incorporate more fiber into my diet than I would even at baseline. But I think that's always a healthy thing for you to do regardless of if you are pregnant or not, just for like, gut health, bowel health, all of that. I have a few meetings this afternoon, so I'm gonna do those Zoom meetings mostly, maybe one in person. And then I'll come back, have a snack maybe, cook dinner, take you through the rest of my day of eating. I'm back, I think I'm pretty much done working for the day. I'm about to cook dinner, but I need to make a snack first, otherwise I will cook hangry and like nobody wants a hangry cook. So I just want something quick and easy. So I'm going to slice up some sourdough bread. I was gonna try to show you down here. Um, I'm gonna put some peanut butter on it after I toast it and then layer some slices of like a Granny Smith apple. It hits my like sweet craving without being too sweet. It will definitely fill me up a little bit before dinner. Like before pregnancy, I probably wouldn't snack right before dinner, but I need to get something in my stomach so I can start digesting so that by the time dinner is ready, I can eat that too without having a ton of acid reflux. So I'm gonna put that together. I do not own a toaster, uh, so I'm just going to be toasting that up in the pan and then eating some of these apple slices while I wait. All right, here is my apple and peanut butter toast. I mean, very basic, but you get some protein, get a little bit of fiber from the fruit, get my sweet kick. This is like a perfect snack for me. I guess I could do it without the bread, but I don't know, I wanted some bread. Crunchy, chewy, I want all the textures. So it was like a perfect pre-dinner snack for me. My whole goal with eating during pregnancy has just been to like eat as healthy as I can, but also understand that I have to have some balance in my life. And then I'm not like counting calories or anything like that. My goal based on my starting weight before pregnancy is to gain somewhere between like 25 and 35 pounds during my pregnancy. I'm pretty much right on track for that. So I think I've been eating the right amount of food as well. I never want to feel overly full because it can make me feel kind of sick, but of course I'm never ever going to go hungry during my pregnancy either. So eating till I just feel good and giving my body what it needs. I'm making a mess. <laughs> I'm just going to finish this up and then I'm going to start prepping dinner tonight. I'm going to make kind of like a curry lentil soup. This is one of my like go-to recipes. I usually cook in bulk, so I'm gonna double the recipe so I have some to freeze or some to take to work later this week. I really like lentils in my soup. I think it adds protein and fiber and bulk and it just makes me feel very satisfied when I'm done eating it. So it is a like an absolute staple in what I make. Tons of different variations on lentil soups and stews. This one sort of has Thai 
inspiration to it. And that's kind of a flavor I've been craving during pregnancy anyway. So I'll take you through that next. All right, I have all of my onion sort of prepped out here. I think I'm gonna use about one and a half onions and I chopped up two, so I'll put some of that away. Put it into my olive oil, get that sauteing, and then while that's sauteing, I will kind of prep the other ingredients to kind of just throw into the soup. So we'll add that now. Oh, that's gonna start smelling so good so quickly. That looks like about one and a half onions. The reality is the first time I ever make a new recipe, I pretty much stick to the recipe completely. And then after that, I'll kind of like change up what I do based on how it turned out. So there are definitely gonna be some modifications in here. So this recipe calls for sweet potatoes, but I'm just not in the mood for sweet potatoes. So we're gonna do some yellow potatoes in there. I've measured out all of my spices ahead of time, like the anal person that I am, but I like to do the spices before I even start cooking because I wanna make sure I have everything before I get halfway through my recipe and then realize, oh, I'm out of curry powder or something. So this is like curry powder, ginger, garlic, salt, and cinnamon. And the nice thing about this recipe is after the onions are prepped, you can just kind of like throw everything in. So that's gonna be my next step. With the coconut milk, I am not doing three full fat coconut cans of milk because I think it will just be like too rich, too creamy. So I'm doing two like regular coconut milks like the recipe calls for, and then I'm gonna do one light coconut milk. All I have to do is add the vegetable broth and then let that cook up. So that doesn't look appetizing yet, but this will be delicious. So while we let this come up to a boil and then simmer, I'm going to prep some greens that we're gonna wilt into the soup. The recipe calls for kale. Kale is okay, but like, I usually like to use chard because I feel like it's a little milder of a flavor. So that's what I'm gonna put in the soup tonight. Here's all the chard. We're not gonna put all of this in the soup. So I'm just gonna prep some of this and then put some of this away to use in a recipe later this week. So I've got the chard sort of chiffonaded and prepped to go in. And then all of this that is not going in, I highly recommend if you do not have a crisper, to get one because I will put all of this into this Tupperware and then it's pre-washed, it's ready to go and then I can incorporate it into recipes throughout the week and not have to worry that every single time I wanna use greens, I have to like prep them or get to the end of the week and be like, oh crap, I let another bunch of green things die in my fridge again. So there it is in the crisper. I'm just gonna put like another paper towel on top to kind of dry up any excess moisture and then grab my lid and it's ready to go for the week. Okay, this has been simmering for about 20 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and add our greens and let it cook down for another 20, nah, like 10 minutes or so, that should be enough. All right, this is all done. The lentils have cooked up. It's creamy, I cannot wait to eat this. Okay, we have dinner, bon appetit. Uh, I think if I hadn't eaten that big piece of toast before dinner, I would toast up some sourdough. I will do that for my husband who I'm actually going to eat this with after we are done chatting. But this is just like the perfect cold weather soup. It's creamy from the coconut milk. It's got the potatoes and the lentils. So there's some chew in there. It's got your greens. And then it's got the spice from the ginger and the garlic. It is just, it's like everything I want in a winter soup. Hopefully I won't burn my mouth on this. It's so good. And I know it's gonna be amazing as leftovers too. So from start to finish, that took me about an hour to cook and get everything ready but now I have like five or six meals sitting in the pot over there. So I'm going to eat this with my husband and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, my husband made it look too good with the bread, so I did get some bread and seconds on this, but it's so good. 
I am just wrapping up my day of eating. I always eat dessert, although I find around the holidays, like I get a little, not like sweeted out, but everywhere I go, there's more delicious desserts than what I keep at home. And so when I'm at home, I feel like I can eat slightly healthier for dessert. So continuing on my citrus trend, I'm gonna have this bad boy for dessert. And then I think I'll be done eating except for Tums. This video is sponsored by Tums. No, just kidding. But I think this pregnancy is sponsored by Tums. Uh, I take two of these <laughs> before bed so that I don't have horrible heartburn. And then I forgot to show you earlier, but the prenatal vitamin that I took for about three or four months before getting pregnant and then through my pregnancy is the nature made prenatal vitamin with DHA. It kind of tastes gross. So I just plug my nose and take it down and it's been working well. So thank you for hanging out with me. I will try to link the recipes to everything I talked about in the description box below. I'm so curious if you had any pregnancy cravings or pregnancy aversions the way I did. Put it in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe and we will hang out next time.